and environmental and engineering studies will soon be conducted uh, along Singapore's east coast. They will look into whether land reclamation is feasible and the impact on nature. It is the first step to realizing the vision of Long Island, a project that will see three land tracks add some 800 hectares of land to the current coastline. It is part of the country's long-term plans to guard against rising sea levels and create land for future needs. Rebecca Mateo has more. A rainy day and a high tide of three metres. That's enough to flood East Coast Park. But on stormy days, the sea level could rise by up to five metres. Rising sea levels pose an existential threat to Singapore, a low-lying island state. National Development Minister Desmond Lee says measures must be put in place to protect homes and livelihoods in the area. This is a very serious problem because around one-third of our island is below five meters above mean sea level and at risk of being inundated by the sea. Whilst it may seem quite distant from today, we have to start planning and preparing now. Known as Long Island, the project envisions three plots of elevated land off the southeastern coast of Singapore. Some 800 hectares will be reclaimed. That's about twice the size of Marina Bay today. The new land will change the area we now know as East Coast Park. There will be a new freshwater reservoir, new homes and new spaces for recreational activities in a few decades' time. In all, the project expects to add 20 kilometres of new coastal and reservoir parks to the area. Authorities will carry out various studies to find out the potential trade-offs and opportunities the project could bring. The studies will also guide the development and transition plans for the site. Innovative designs that use engineering and nature-based solutions for the land will also be looked at. As a start, we will need to kickstart extensive environmental and engineering studies to see if the conceptual reclamation profile is feasible and formulate innovative and cost-effective nature-based solutions to reclaim and develop Long Island. We expect the studies to take around five years. Um, Mr Lee says the project is still in early stages and the final shape and form of Long Island will evolve over time. An expert says this is an ambitious project that will take decades and taking up an area of the seafloor will cause some environmental impacts. It's hoped that we can put the best science and engineering that we have into the development of this project, um, put in some perhaps some hybrid solutions, some nature-based solutions, perhaps artificial reefs or mangroves or wetlands um, that help us attack climate change in other ways by sequestering carbon here locally. So there's, there's a long way to go. For now, the agencies will be gathering views from the public, residents and businesses in the area. They will also be reaching out to nature, heritage and recreational interest groups. And on the heels of the proposed Long Island plan, analysts say that prices of existing private residential property that's along East Coast is expected to rise. Now, this is even as the supply of homes increases. They say that's because a majority of existing developments there are freehold and likely to have strong demand from buyers. And with more, uh, say, infrastructure amenities that actually going to be provided in that area, it may actually raise up the overall appeal of uh, homes around that area as well. So some of these existing homes over at East Coast, uh, maybe some of them will be blocked in terms of the view, but it can also increase the uh, so-called on-block potential for some of these developments also in the long run. Analysts believe that the area could be transformed into some 60,000 homes, most of them public flats, to help create a more inclusive society along the East Coast. The three proposed elevated plots of land could also have a mix of uses. Now, taking a look at the bit in red that's closer to Marina East, analysts say that this land tract development could have both low and high residential buildings with 99-year leases.
And for the land tract in the center, well, analysts believe that low-rise waterfront housing or recreational activities would be more suitable given its narrow size. The other segment near the Changi areas uh, is also very close to the future military air base and also the extended kind of uh, uh, airport land use. I think that area may not be suitable for residential use. It's probably likely to uh, be used for some industry recreation and, and uh, especially for warehousing kind of logistics. And what about the loss of natural habitats and nesting sites for animals and the destruction of coral reefs? Well, that's what the Nature Society of Singapore is concerned about. This especially when the proposed Long Island plans will close off existing shorelines and create a freshwater reservoir. The Nature Society says species like the horseshoe crab and birds like the Malaysian plover will likely find their habitats affected. Sea turtles will also lose access to their nesting sites near Tanamera. The society says it would take time for habitats to be restored. It says engineering solutions could be, uh, include building beaches with the right incline for sea turtles to return. We're always thinking of um, replicating habitats that we are lost and also enhancing existing habitats or even recreating new habitats if opportunity arises. So with this Long Island plan, I think there's a lot of opportunity in terms of freshwater habitats, um, recreating and engineering um, nature-based solutions along the seaward side of the Long Island, line, Long Island project as well. Well, businesses are also mixed about the Long Island plan. Some say it could mean a more vibrant area with more footfall, despite the short-term disruption from noise and works. But they also say that there could be grave consequences for businesses offering water sports in the sea. It's a frequent sight each weekend. Dozens of sports enthusiasts with the wind in their faces out in the open sea, surfing and paddling. For nearly six years, this sea sports centre is one of those places where they get to rent kits and boards. Now the business is worried that Long Island may disrupt their fun in the sun. In the coast reservoir, normally the wind will be very disrupted. It may not be as good as how the open sea can be like. And with, I believe with all the buildings coming out, the wind will be even really affected as well. So far, if I know, not wrong, there's no freshwater catchment area that is allowing windsurfing and sand paddling. Meanwhile, across the road, stalls at the East Coast Lagoon Food Village think that footfall might be affected. They say construction works might divert customers away from the main walkways that lead to the place from car parks and cycling paths. But for some residents, they're hoping Long Island could make the whole stretch of shoreline more vibrant with new shops and amenities. I think the beauty of this project is it's really far, far reaching in the future. I think this particular development is not just for URA, for buildings or what. It is back to Singaporeans to make it a thriving space uh, for families. And what I hear, curated spaces that we do not even have today. Right now, other businesses in the area include bicycle rental shops and other restaurants. Authorities want to gather views of those who could be affected over the next five years, starting next year.